what can you run on 200 watts of solar power? Next, stay tuned. All right, what can you run on 200 watts of solar um, realistically? Of course, that's I'll, it's gonna depend a little bit on whether you're a full-timer or just a weekender. A slight bit of difference there. Um, my name is Robert, Desert Horizons, uh, AZ Off-Grid Unplugged RV. Um, so like asking what you could run on 200 watts of solar is like asking how far can I drive on two gallons of gas? And there's a lot of factors that go into that. What are you driving? Where are you driving? Is it all uphill, downhill, uh, in the rain? You know, how do you drive? Are you one of those lead foots? So it's gonna make a difference. The same thing with solar, the same exact thing with solar. It depends on how you use it. These are uh, two 100 watt panels I have hooked up. Now this is not all the panels I have, but it's still gonna work for, for this. Um, but energy storage, also known as batteries, is a totally different subject than what you can power with 200 watts of solar. And I'll be touching on that a little bit later. But because of the sun position, you will not always get full juice, just as a large factor of losses. And you have losses in the panels themselves. Um, they're rated at 100 watts, but that's only at perfect conditions with the sun directly overhead shining, you know, right on. Um, and then you got these wires here. Well, they're gonna have a little bit of loss in them too. That's just the way it works. That's why you try to keep those runs as short as you can. Uh, and then those, those wires go to a charge controller. And depending on the model of charge controller you have, you're gonna have losses in that too. And then you see you got four wires there. So you got two coming in from the solar panel and two going out to the batteries. Well, the ones that go out to the batteries are gonna have a loss in them too. So then, then from the batteries, there's more wires that go up to an inverter so you can plug in stuff. Uh, this is if you want to use AC power, uh, like an AC TV, an AC fan, which is normally which, which you'd normally plug into the house, a real house, is AC power. Um, if you're doing this RV style, uh, the, the two panels, and say you have two batteries, and if you're just doing this on a weekend, you'll leave on, say, Friday with a full charge of batteries. Uh, you may use some juice on Friday night, and Saturday morning and Saturday all day, the batteries are recharging all the way up to full because of the panels you have. So it'll work again for Saturday night and then you go home Sunday and everything's fine. Uh, just don't try and run a 1500 watt appliance off of 200 watts of solar. Because what the, the solar panel, but like I said, with all the losses, so out of the panels, say you lose 10% out of the panel actually a little more than that, but we'll say 10%. So now you're down to 90 watts out of each. That's 180 watts coming out of the pan. And then you have another, say, 3% on the wires. Uh, and then it gets to the charge controller, and depending on the quality of the charge controller, uh, you're gonna have losses there, which may amount to 10%, maybe even more. Uh, and then a new, another 2% of wires, two or three from those to the batteries. And then from the batteries to the in, inverter, another 2%, and then you lose another 10% on the inverter, depending on the quality of the inverter you bought. So that's 30% uh, you know, plus 36%. So right off the bat, you're losing one third of the power. So out of a 200 watt panels, you're actually only getting 133 watts of usable energy out of them in perfect condition. Now, as it, like I said, as the sun go, comes up and goes down and has different angles on the panels, the charge coming in from them is going to be a little less. But for example, a 24 inch uh, LCD t TV uses about 25 watts. So that would easily run on two solar panels. Uh, if you had a direct TV box, I know the old ones used to take 80 watts. I don't know what the new ones did. Uh, but when I first bought one in the mid 90s, they were 80 watts each, so I had to figure that into my solar. Um, 
uh, and then all the lights you use. Like I said, this is if this is for a weekend or a full timer, makes a difference. Because a full timer is not going to use as much out of the batteries at any one time as a weekender would. Um, just because a full timer wants those things to last longer, uh, you never want to drain your batteries down below 50 percent. So, you know, depending on the size of the batteries you get. So normally 12 volt batteries are 100 amp hours each. Uh, so if you got two of them, that'd be 200 amp hours. Well, if you can only use 50%, you're back down to 100 amp hours. <laughs> it's weird how this all works, but that's the way it works. Um, so you can't argue with physics or whatever it is. Because of all the losses and everything else, you come up to the conclusion it's about 130 watts roughly that you get out of two 100 watt panels that you can use. Uh, I got two, let's see, you can see in there two one gallon wa uh, water jugs representing two 12 volt batteries or two six volt batteries, doesn't make any difference. Uh, they all work the same. And you got two 100 watt panels putting in about 130 watts into them at any one time. And that's how they work for draining them. You put a little hole in it, you get about 25 watts out of it. Depending on how big your battery bank is, will be how long it'll last. And the same thing if you put a size for a 60 watt hole in it. It'll last as long as it takes to drain how many batteries you got. And then you got the 200 watt, and then of course the 1500 watt, which would be like a microwave and stuff. You can see it wouldn't take long to, to drain. Doesn't make any difference how many batteries you got. It wouldn't take too long to, to drain them at all. Now, the one thing that's missing here is that you really only want to use, at the most, half of your battery bank. You try and keep it so that you're only using 25% of your battery bank if you really want to get them to last a long time. And this is if you're a, a weekender and you know it doesn't make that much difference because you're not way out in the sticks when your batteries may go dead, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're living with your electrical grid off of your batteries, then it makes a difference. You only want to really drain them down about 25% and then recharge them back up. So you can see that the, those 200 watts of panels I got wouldn't even be enough to replenish that hole. So, you know, I mean, I hope this helps visualize in your head how batteries work and the drainage and, you know, what you got going into the top is just as important as how much you're sucking out of the bottom. All right, this is a 2.7 cubic foot refrigerator that I can run on 200 watts of solar. Because it usually only runs on 60 watts. So startup would be about 200, but that would only be for a split second, then it would settle down to 60 most of the time. So you can operate that on 200 watts of solar. You can also operate fans like this on low. This is a 10 inch fan, but on low, this thing uses 25 watts. On high, it's about 45 or 50, I believe. So that plus the refrigerator would be about all you could use at any one time and maybe one small light. Or you could charge up your phone and the fan and the refrigerator at the same time. And a smaller TV. This is a 24 inch. You know, like I said, this takes 25 watts, so you just add everything up and don't use more than the power coming in from the solar panel. So if you keep it under, say, 120 watts, you won't have a problem. You can run everything all day long. Like I was saying, if you use this full time, you're going to want to make sure you don't use more than what's going into the battery at any particular moment. Because the batteries are your lifeline. I mean, that's, that's it. That's your electrical grid. If you're just a weekender and you have to replace the batteries every year and you get a couple of the cheap batteries from Walmart, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, it might be a little inconvenient for one night, but big deal, you know. So that's what the difference is between weekenders and full-timers. Charge up rechargeable things. You can charge up laptop computers, charge up phones, and all this while a refrigerator and a small TV are running um, and depending on the size of the batteries is how long you can run those 
when the sun goes down. That's the difference in the batteries. <clears throat> the batteries are for how long you want to run it. The solar panels are for, basically that's a good way to figure out what you can run. I hope this helps. One thing to keep in mind is just make sure any system you get, <clears throat> if you start out with a 100 watt or a 200 watt system, that you get one that can be expanded. Uh, like that charge controller I showed you earlier, that can go up to four panels, 400 watts. So if you start out with 200, and you'll find out that, that you'll want more eventually for something, but uh, you can go up to 400 watts easy. They're only about $100 a, 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 a panel for 100 watt system. So as long as you got room to put them, I have a total of 12 100 watt panels. But I started out with one, <laughs> that's the way it works. All right, if you look on the side of this, uh, <laughs> the side of the panel, I think it's in the camera, you'll see that it's uh, camouflaged. Well, that means it's the uh, yeah, very first solar panel I bought three years ago with that charge controller. And then I bought the second solar panel to go along with it, and I'm still using them. Um, so if you're, this one is, this particular setup is from Windy Nation. Um, it was about $170 for one panel, the charge controller, all the wiring you could want, all the the Z brackets for mounting it. I mean, it's it's every. The only thing you still need then is an inverter to plug your stuff into, and a battery, and you're set. Um, like I said, I got the the hundred watt system. Um, it's a like I said, it's working great, and because it was expandable like it was, I can still use this. I can put these two panels up on the awning with the other ten and just not even use that charge controller. Um, uh, that, that involves buying a much more expensive charge controller, which I have. But like I said, this one's still working, still producing power, still putting juice in my batteries for me. It's not much of a juice compared to the other panels, but like I said, it still works. Desert Horizons AZ Off-Grid Unplugged RV Ridge.